Good morning, everyone, uh, and welcome uh, uh, back to the, uh, um, uh, I would say, the eighth lecture or ninth lecture on uh, GI system, which is uh, about the small intestine. Yes, you see in the title, guys, the uh, uh, duodenum, um, uh, but you know that the small intestine uh, uh, is composed from three parts. The duodenum, that we will talk, um, the, the first talk will be about it, and duodenum and Ilium. So let us start with the first part of the small intestine, which is about the duodenum. Well, first of all, guys, you know in general that the small intestine is the longest part of the alimentary tract and GI system. Started from the uh, uh, pyloric uh, orifice here, from the pylorus of the uh, stomach until the ileocecal junction and you know guys we the small intestine has a three parts the first one which is the duodenum the duodenum uh, continues with the jejunum then the jejunum continues with the uh, ileum until it reaches the ileocecal junction so we have three uh, parts so guys i will start with the uh, 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 most important structure and the first one which is the duodenum look at it first of all the duodenum is a c shape which is you know about 25 centimeters but yeah uh, the duodenum itself in greek language it means 12. so they uh, estimated that the length of a duodenum is 12 fingers a breadth yani nashur osba which is you know approximately about 25 centimeters and you see that the duodenum guys is the ring that connects the stomach to the duodenum right this is the third thing and when you look at it just i'm trying to describe it at the first it receives an opening from the pile duct and also from the pancreatic duct which is very important and also when you look it when you look at it, it's like a c-shape inside this curve there is a very important structure the head of the pancreas this is the head of pancreas which is located in the um, uh, curve of the c-shape of the duodenum, which is very important uh, as well so guys uh, maybe the last lecture or the previous lecture about the stomach and peritoneum uh, I don't know if that uh, Beritonium was covered or not, but uh, I, you, uh, I'm expecting to know the uh, 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 about the Beritonium. However, guys, the duodenum is a retroberitoneal structure. What does it mean when you say retroberitoneal? That means it's behind the Beritonium. That means it's behind the uh, Beritonium in the pack, except the first part of the duodenum the first part of the duodenum is um, covered by uh, uh, mesentery so it's intra peritoneal the first part of the duodenum just the first part is covered by peritoneum because uh, it's connected to the liver connected to the liver by uh, uh, a peritoneum that thickened to form ligament so this ligament is known as hepato duodenal ligament hepato duodenal ligament which is you know part of uh, lesser omentum i'm expecting that you know the lesser omentum and the greater omentum anyway i will give you brief after a couple of slides about it so let us locate the uh, uh duodenum however let us draw the uh, shadow of the stomach first so this is the greater curvature of the stomach and this is the pyloric part again this is the lesser curvature of the stomach pyloric part and you can see guys uh that begins it begins from the uh pylorus here this is the beginning of it on the right side because if you draw a midline the median line right midline and the mid of your body so it uh, it starts with the uh, the uh, duodenum starts with the connection with the uh, uh, pylorus on the right side which is about one centimeter or two centimeters from the midline and at the level of l1 which is very important you know this plane is pyloric plane 
pyloric plane at the level of L1. Always remember that for the rest of your life. This is the pylorus of the stomach, and there is a plane here. And I explained how can we determine the pyloric plane yesterday. So this is a pyloric plane at the level of L1, which is between the jugular notch and symphysis pupus, the midpoint in between here, or it's between the zygote process and umbilicus, guys. Now, uh, what I want to say here, guys, that okay, it connects to the um, uh, pylorus at the right, and the because it's the duodenum is a C shape, then the other part of the duodenum moved to the left, and now it's uh, connected to the jejunum at the duodenal jejunal flexure. This flexure or junction is known as duodenal jejunal flexure which is at the level of, not L1, at the level of L2, which is about two to three centimeters from the midline. So we can locate the uh, uh, location of the um, connection of pyros to the uh, duodenum here, and the connection of duodenum to the duodenum here. So guys, uh, as you see, and as we mentioned, says she shape and composed from four parts. Look at the colors of it. This is the first part. This is the second part. This is the third part. And this is the fourth part. But we can call it like differently by saying, okay, this the first part is the superior part. And the third part is the inferior part. Let's just change the color now. Okay, this is superior and inferior. This is descending part, the second part. Descending part. And the fourth part is the ascending part. Now, now the first part, because it's connected to the pylorus, and we know that the pylorus at the level of L1, the first part is at the level of L1. The second part between L1 and L3. L1 to L3. Now, the third part, of course, this is L3, yes, it's at the level of L3 also. But the fourth part, it ascends up from L3 to L2 here. Okay, you have to know all of these... Uh, 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 things guys so let us start guys with the most important part is the first part and also the second part but let's start now with the first part look at the pyrus here guys that connects now to the first part of duodenum and you see here the first two centimeters of the first part the first two centimeters of the first part is smooth look at it that means there is no mucosal fold, so it's free, and it's the only part that's covered by uh, or has a mesentery that's connected, you know, to the liver, if you remember. And as I said, this is free and is mobile and um, is internally is smooth, and you can distinguish it. Uh, uh, in radiology and uh, what else guys so yes the first two centimeters here of the superior part of the duodenum known as ampulla it's called ampulla or duodenal cap you have to know that so this region that I'm describing this is the first two centimeters of the first part it's known as the ampulla or duodenal cap, it's up to you. Internally is smooth, there is no mucosal fold, it's the only part connected to the um, uh, uh, mesentery. And uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, this is the most duodenal, most of duodenal ulcer or ulcers occur here in this part. Why? Because it's very close, the first part that's very close to the gastric secretion so so 
it's uh, more susceptible for duodenal ulcer. So all of these characteristics, guys, related to the duodenal cap, which is important. Now, somebody can say, yes, what about the wrist three centimeters of the first part? Yes, the wrist three centimeters of the first uh, part has no mesentery. That means not connected to other structures, has no peritoneum connected to it. And, you know, the wrist of duodenum here, inferiorly, this is okay, the duodenal ampulla and or... Uh, duodenal cap. So the rest of the duodenum, all of the duodenum is located, they are located behind the peritoneum. But this part covered by peritoneum and you see here, look at the inferior one, look at the first part guys, it's called, you see this, this is the hepatoduodenal ligament, which is of course thickened peritoneum. This is the thickened peritoneum. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. So, what about the relation? You have to know that mostly, guys, in the duodenum, we are focusing on relations. Yes, I'll be exactly sure. In duodenum, I'm issue relations. There are a couple of relations you have to be um, aware and give it like more focus. Let us start with the first part. First part is, uh, is important. So again, this is the first part of the uh, first part of the duodenum, and uh, uh, of course, guys, anteriorly, look at the liver here above, which is reflected up. because you know, uh, it covers uh, 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 most of the uh, stomach. However, here is guys, this region of the um, liver is called quadrate lobe. It's a quadrangular shape. So it's located here. And of course, bars from the uh, uh, gall bladder also located here at the, in the front, anterior to the first part. Now, this is anteriorly. So we have a quadrate lobe and the um, Gallbladder. This is the gallbladder, Marara. But most importantly, this is very important. This posterior relation of the first part is very important. Why? Let me show you the posterior relation of it. This is again the first part guide of the duodenum. So posterior to it, guys, you will find the lesser sac. You know what's the lesser sac? Look at it here. You see, the, we mentioned that the first part of the duodenum, the first part is connected uh, or has a mesentery. This is the part of lesser omentum. This is the lesser omentum. Simply, lesser omentum is a peritoneum, double layer of peritoneum that connects the lesser curvature of the stomach and the first part of the duodenum to the uh, other structure and in this case to the liver right so guys what I want to say that behind this omentum behind the lesser omentum there is a space you can get it get in here by the epibluic foramen when you go behind it you will reach to the uh, to a space this is space let me show you if we have it here no uh, maybe later in this uh, lecture. So there is a space, the space which is like a sac, known as lesser sac. يعني باختصار هذا شايفين البريتونيوم اللي بيربط اللسر curvature of the stomach and first part the liver خلفه لو فوتت من الفتحة هاي راح تلاقي فيه عبارة عن فراغ. هذا الفراغ بسميه لسر sac. So behind the first part of the duodenum there is a lesser sac. Just I'm talking about the first inch, just the first part of it, not all of it, because, you know, it moves laterally away from the sac. Just the first part, the first inch of the first part of the genome, located behind it, there is a lesser sac. Okay, what else, guys? We have very important artery, very important, which is the gastroduodenal artery, which is here, that you see here. So, this is artery. What else? We have, guys, also the bile duct that carries the pile secretion from the uh, gallbladder to the 
second bar to the denom. So we have bile duct. What we have also, we have guys, the portal vein. Look at the portal uh, vein here. Also located behind the first part. What else also? We have inferior vena cava. So we have two veins, one bile duct, one artery. So all of these structures, guys, located behind the first part. We have lesser sac, gastrointestinal artery, bile duct, portal vein, and so this is a portal vein, not this portal vein, and inferior vena cava, all of these structures, which is very important. So maybe show you here. Okay, not shown here. That's enough. So these structures behind the first part are important. Superiorly, I think you can see which is the uh, entrance to the lesser sac. We said behind here, behind the lesser omentum, we have lesser sac. So this is the entrance of to the lesser sac. You can insert your finger during surgery. You can insert your finger here through the omental or the pluic foramen or uh, foramen of Winslow. All of these names used for most uh, common ones, the pubic foramen here. So superior to the first part. Inferiorly, guys, to the first part is the head of pancreas. Let me show you, which is here. So this is the first part. And inferior to it, we have the head of pancreas. So these structures are very important. So let us move to the second part. This is the second part, the descending part of the uh, duodenum, which, uh, you know, moved vertically. Uh, uh, of course, uh, it covers the front of the hilum of right kidney. Let me show you. You see here, this is the kidney, the right kidney, of course. This is the shadow of the right kidney, and this is the right subarinic gland. Anyway, look at the second part of the duodenum that covers the... Uh, this part of the kidney, as you see here, covers the front of the hilum of the kidney, because this is the right kidney and this is the hilum of the right kidney, so it covers the anterior uh, half of it on the uh, right side at the level of, uh, say, L2, L3, but it extends from L1 to L3. Uh, so guys, the second part is important, very important also. Most of, you know, you have to express also a question in the exam about the second part. Why? Because look at the second part and look to the medial border here of the second part. You can see there uh, are like two openings here or two papillae, one here and one a little bit above it, sorry, above it here, right? So I'll use another pen. So we have guys and openings for the bile duct. Look at it here. This is the bile duct that descends behind the first part and it reaches here. So this is the bile duct. And also, from the pancreas, we have the main pancreatic duct and accessory pancreatic duct, right? So let me show you both. Here is the main pancreatic duct. And this is the accessory pancreatic duct. Look at the main pancreatic duct. It unites with the bile duct here to form like ampulla. Ampulla of water or called, uh, 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 yes, you can say uh, ampulla of water or hepatopancreatic ampulla. Hepato because it carries the bile that is synthesized in the liver and pancreas from here so it's called hepatopancreatic uh, ampulla or ampulla of water related to this scientist that who discovered this uh, ampulla so this ampulla hepatopancreatic ampulla opens into the medial um, um, border of the Duodenum, the second part of the duodenum, where is exactly mainly in the half, in the halfway. So if you say this is the second part, so the halfway is here. So, med on the medial uh, uh, border, you will see there is a papilla here, which is the major 
ديودينا البابيلا سو so, از the major duodenal papilla through which the uh, ampulla uh, overture or hepatopancreatic ampulla opens here to the you know to secrete the pile and uh, pancreatic secretion but also there is another small opening but not the major one it's minor smaller one above it a little bit above the major one which is for the uh, secretion of the accessory pancreatic duct right okay these uh, structures are important we'll talk more about them when we talk about the uh, pancreas so guys uh, again here's what i described the um, bile duct that unites with the main pancreatic duct to form the hepatopancreatic ampulla that opens into the medial border at the midway of the second part of the duodenum and the major duodenal papillae also the accessory pancreatic smaller duct this one opens into another duodenal papilla the minor duodenal papilla which is just a little bit above the major one okay now what's the relation of the second part well guys anteriorly here you will find the fundus of gallbladder this is a goal this is the fundus of gallbladder and the uh, right lobe of the liver i don't know if i have here so yes this is the second part so also you have the right lobe of the liver and the fundus of the gallbladder located guys here and uh, guys also you have the transverse colon you see the transverse colon it passes here okay all of these structures in uh, in addition to the some cause of small intestine located anterior to the second part uh, the descending part i mean now posteriorly we have guys this is the right kidney so this is the hilum of right kidney with of course right ureter and the uh, uh sous major muscle in which the ureter traverse it laterally guys you have the ascending uh, uh ascending uh, colon and right colic flexure you know right colic right colic flexure because this ascending colon transverse colon this angle is the right colic flexure or sometimes they call it hepatic colic flexure okay what we have else other than the ascending colon and right colic flexure we have also some part of the right lobe of the liver that covers of course some part of it medially this is mostly you will see it in the exam this is the second part so medially there's the head of pancreas there's bile duct there's main pancreatic duct so these structures very important located medial to the second part of the duodenum you see why the duodenum is important okay let us now move a little bit um toward the uh, left and uh, see the uh, third part of the duodenum look at the, at the highlighted part which is the horizontal or inferior part this part the third part of the duodenum and guys uh it crossed let me show you the relation anteriorly of this part look at it here look at the peritoneum that being cut it here you see the peritoneum that cut it here it's the mesentery this is the mesentery of a small intestine so from here from here guys there is a double layer of peritoneum known as the uh, mesentery of a small intestine from here the they attach to the coils of a small intestine so the small intestine that's located here attached to the mesentery and what you saw guys here is the root of the mesentery يعني المكان الجذور اللي بيطلع منه المزنتري اللي هو الدبل لاير اوف بريتونيوم الغشاء اللي بيمسك الامعاء الدقيقه السمول انتستين بيطلع من هون سو اتس باسز انتيريور تو ذا 
third part of duodenum. So what else, guys? Yes, it has the mesentery passes from here in the front of it, and we know that the mesentery contains blood vessels and nervatic and uh, lymphatic uh, vessels as well. So that means we expect it to have vessels. Yes, we have very important two vessels: superior mesenteric artery, superior mesenteric vein to the right. Those passages through the mesentery to supply the small intestine. So these structures located anterior to the third, third part, also very important. Posteriorly, look at it here. The third part always is important. Anterior to it, we have vessels, and posterior to it, we have vessels. Look at the third, third part. Behind it, we have the aorta and inferior vena cava. Look at them here. Behind it. Take care. So... But superior to it, we have the, uh, I would say, part of the head of the pancreas, here. Inferiorly, there's uh, like coils of duodenum. So, the last part, which is a really interesting part, uh, curved part, which is the fourth part of the duodenum. This is the fourth part, guys in which it starts at the level of L3, then ascends to the L2. Because this is L2, this is L3. Yes, and there is a like angle here. This is like, it makes like angle here, which is the, uh, uh, which is uh, important. This is the duodeno jejunal flexure. Okay. I'm not gonna say too much about that. I have to, um, so uh, now, from the fourth part, the duodenum start the uh, it continues as the duodenum here, right? So this angle, this flexure, this junction is the duodeno duodenal flexure. Okay, this angle, guys, as you see, is attached to a kind of a ligament here which is known as suspensor ligament of duodenum. It suspends the duodenum, it fix it to the back. So this suspensory, it's a peritoneum that contains uh, also a, a, a muscle fibers. This is called suspensor ligament of duodenum. Clinically, they don't use usually suspensory uh, muscle or suspensory ligament. They use ligament of treats, ligament of treats. So this ligament, attached to the right this is the right across which is around the esophagus this is the right across so it attached to the right across of the diaphragm this is a diaphragm right nothing to say nothing that much to say about anterior relation but you see here also anterior to the fourth part is also the root of mesentery the root of mesentery and cause of duodenum because duodenum will start here. And superiorly, we have the body of the pancreas because of the head, and this is the body of pancreas. Interestingly, guys, when you open the duodenum, and I wish we have uh, cadavers, but unfortunately, we don't have maybe in the coming. Uh, uh, semesters we will uh, I don't know if we will get or not but anyway uh, you can google it on YouTube and see the uh, really uh, uh, internal mucous membrane of the duodenum you remember the uh, cap or the duodenal ampulla the first part or the cap which is like um, uh, the mucous membrane which is smooth why is it smooth because there is no mucosal, there is no folds of mucosal membrane. The, indeed, just the small cap part is devoid of folds of mucous membrane. These circular folds, known as plica circularis, it is an important feature of the duodenum, except of the first part, of course, of the uh, uh, first two centimeters of the first part, which is known as the cap or the dinal cap or the dinal ampulla we talked about it 
So the folds of mucous membrane um, fold close to each other, form like uh, this mucous membrane known as flica circularis. Look at it here. This is the uh, duodenal cap, the first two centimeters of the first part of a duodenum. No mucosal fold. But the second part, because we have here, so this is the first one, which is the A. Now, let us move to the second part here. Look at the mucosal folds here, which is very important. Now, go to the, uh, 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 say, the this is, I think, I'm not sure, but I think this is the major duodenal papilla here. And the third part here, guys, which is, again, a lot of mucus, um, a mucosal fold or plica circularis. So this is during in the upper endoscopy, right? Here in this cadaver, guys, uh, and I have to finish very close now, this is the duodenum. This is the first, uh, the pyrex sphincter, which is thick. Then this is the cap. This is, uh, of course, the first part of the duodenum. This is the second part. This is the inferior or third part. And this is the fourth part of the duodenum. Look at the second part and head of pancreas here. Look at the second part again and the hilum of the right kidney and the uh, sous muscle, guys. Look at the ureter. Uh, what else? Look at the goal, a right lobe of the right lobe of the liver and goal bladder. They are retracted, uh, reflected up. Okay, look to the third part and behind it, guys, uh, posterior to it, you have the aorta, superior vena cava. Okay. Blood supply of the duodenum. Simply, guys, look at it here. It takes the uh, okay. It takes the blood. The uh, uh, duodenum takes its blood supply. I will finish this within five minutes. Uh, the duodenum because we have a small intestine, so it comes from the two sources, from celiac trunk and from superior uh, mesenteric artery. However, the upper part of the duodenum, guys, uh, gets its blood supply from the gastro artery this is the i will use another pen right this is the gastro artery which is um, uh, a branch of common hepatic artery common hepatic artery branch from celiac trunk right this is the one of the main anterior branches of the aorta abdominal aorta okay from celiac trunk there is common uh, hepatic artery from common hepatic artery we have gastro from its name gastro that means to supply the stomach and the duodenum gastro artery divides into uh, it gives of course the superior pancreatico duodenal artery this is the superior pancreatico duodenal from its name pancreatico duodenal that means it will supply the pancreas and the duodenum because you know the pancreas it's like it's uh, encircled with the uh, the head of it encircled with the duodenum. So we have superior pancreatico duodenal arteries. One anterior and one is posterior. Now let us inferiorly the inferior part, guys. You know if this is the celiac trunk, this is the superior mesenteric artery which is another branch of abdominal aorta anteriorly. So it gives inferior pancreaticodudinal artery. Inferiorly, it has inferior pancreaticodudinal artery. Also, we have posterior and anterior guys, right? They make anastomosis. Very simple. Veins follow the same superior pancreatic uh, duodenal uh, vein and we have inferior pancreatic duodenal vein the inferior pancreatic duodenal usually drains into superior mesenteric vein similar to the artery but the superior one uh, uh, it drains into portal uh, uh, vein look at it here also from the back portal 
vein. There is there is a lot of variations in this drainage. So you can read from different authorities like different things. Lymphatics, guys, which is always, um, I would say, mainly easy to remember the lymphatic drainage because lymphatic drainage follow the deep arteries. How's that? Okay, we mentioned the blood supply of the duodenum from, uh, uh, of course, uh, celiac uh, artery and superior mesenteric artery through, of course, gastrodudinal artery above and pancreatic uh, um at the end. Gastrodudinal will give superior mesenteric, if you remember. Let me show you again. Again, let us remind, let me remind you with the results. We mentioned the superior part by gastrodudinal artery that gives superior pancreatic duodenal. But here, we have inferior pancreatic duodenal. So, the superior pancreatic duodenal at the end of the day from celiac. The inferior pancreatic duodenal at the end of the day from the superior mesenteric. So, the lymphatics will drain to the celiac lymph node and to the superior uh, mesenteric lymph nodes. Lymph nodes around superior mesenteric artery and lymph nodes around celiac artery. So, they are known as celiac lymph node, superior mesenteric lymph nodes as you see here guys uh, this is celiac nodes close to the celiac trunk and superior mesenteric lymph node close to the superior mesenteric artery sympathetic and parasympathetic of course from vagus there is a plexus uh, created around the superior mesenteric from here it gives like sympathetic they, the, the superior mesenteric plexus here contains both sympathetic and parasympathetic so this slide is very important, uh, guys. Take care. And you remember, this is the uh, uh, pyloric orifice, and this is the duodenal cap, duodenal cap or ampulla. And remember that an ulcer, usually most of the ulcers occurs, most of the ulcers occur at the posterior wall of the superior part of the duodenum. So this is the first part of the duodenum, mostly of the duodenal ulcer, يعني جرحة الاثنى عشر تحدث بالجدار الخلفي in the posterior. Most of the duodenal ulcer occurs in the posterior wall of superior of the superior part of the duodenum. Why it's important? So if the duodenal perforated, خزق يعني there is an important artery here, which is the gastrodudinal artery. That means you have to expect massive bleeding, severe hemorrhage. Here, why that's why this part of the slide is important. Let me remind you guys here. I'll show you. Look at the look at the gastrodudinal artery that passes behind the first part of the duodenum. So if there is erosion or ulcer in the posterior wall, the here, and that will lead to massive bleeding.